we've cleaned all the outer housing out, or the inner housing out, I should say. I've cleaned all the gaskets off with a little scraper and um, a little 3M buffing pad. And, well, you can hear the wind. It's blowing a gale outside. But we did have one stud here that came out with the nuts, so what we do with that, I just like to pop a little Loctite on it. Once I know the thread's clean, and it is, I bring a nut down. And we screw him in the hole. That should take him as far as he needs to go. And we just double nut it. And by, by double nut, I mean we just get two nuts. Lock them together against each other. And then that way, with the lock tied on, You can feel that's gone hard because the nuts are turning on the thread now. So we know that nut's gone in as far as it can go. Release the nut. And we know if this ever has to come apart again, that stud will stay where it's supposed to be. Okay, we'll go and get the gasket. Well, we have the gasket here, and that's a paper gasket. And when we look at a piece of the old gasket, the new one is very close to the thickness of the old one, just a little bit fatter at this stage because it hasn't been compressed. Now, let's have a discussion about gasket goo. When you look at gasket goo and, and you have to look at what you're expecting from your gasket goo. Now, if you put Loctite 515 around here and put it on, not a problem. You could do that, but keep in mind that the housing here with your diff bearing in, if you take these gaskets out, you've tightened up your diff that much. And so by having no gasket this side and a gasket the other side, you push your cram wheel away and you end up with too much backlash between your cram wheel and pinion. Now on these tractors, that's non-adjustable. Um, Harry Ferguson, when he's designed them, he decided that a bearing is X, and you know, as in diameter, and the stack height, the stack height of your bearing. So how high, if you sat your bearing on a, on a bench, how high it would come up c compared with the cup and the cone. And that's a standard thing, it's a standard thing right through machinery, but, but um, when they designed the tractors they decided that um, there was no need to adjust that. They could get their tolerances close enough that they'd be right. And, and that's fair enough, they probably have. But the gasket here, they've decided to fit a gasket. So what the gasket does, it does help seal the oil a little bit, but the gasket actually helps take up any discrepancies between the two housings. So the two housings, like the, the diff housing here and the trumpet housing, chances are they would have been machined in different machines, different jigs, things like that. So, so by having the gasket here, it takes up any minor discrepancies and it does help seal the joint. If you're planning on putting like a silicon based rubber thing that beads out and little bits stick in here, go and chuck the silicon in the bin now. It's rubbish. Um, what I'm going to put on this gasket, there's no gasket goo at all. And what I do like to do is just use a little bit of grease. Now this is, this is my grease I use for everything, wheel bearing grease, it's just, just a general purpose optimum choice, it's Valvoline optimum choice grease um, and I use that on a lot of things and 
I bite in a cartridge and as, as my finger doesn't dip down in anymore, I get the tin snips, chop it off and put the cap back on. And yeah, you can keep putting the cap on you know, down, 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 down all the way. So um, yeah, when you can't dip your finger in anymore, chop him off and, and bring the cap back down. It's not a real straight edge. So what I'm saying with this gasket, I'm going to put grease on it. Now grease, if we ever need to pop the hip off, um, the hip will come off and we'll probably save the gasket. The gasket won't need replacing, maybe. Um, it'll help lubricate and keep the surfaces nice. It'll keep the gasket in place while we're putting the axle there. But the gasket will do the sealing for you. If you're relying on your aviation cement or something like that to do the sealing for you, well, you haven't done the job properly. So, and that means you've left a bit of gasket here or you've done, you've done something not real good. So, um, so I'm just gonna put red grease on this. You use whatever color you like. And that will hold the gasket back in place nice and gently for me. Um, and when the other housing comes up, it'll, and I bolt it up, there'll be a little bit of grease squeezes out of the joint probably. The grease that squeezes out on the inside of the joint here will mix with the transmission oil in time and, and disappear. We won't even see it. Even a little bit of brown aviation cement. If I wasn't using grease, I would use the brown aviation cement. Um, silicon products should be chucked to the shit house. And, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, any grease that gets in here, well, it's no harm done. I can come in from the other side and wipe it off anyway. Any, any grease comes around here, I can wipe it off. When I wash the tractor up to give it its final coat of paint, I haven't got a little bead of silicon or a little bead of rubbish here I've got to try and tidy up or leave there. And then um, I see tractors that are painted and there's a bit of silicon hanging out and, and they've painted over it. And over time, the paint doesn't like to stick to the silicon. And next thing, the silicon comes off and you've got a, a shitty piece of um, paint there. So this is how I choose to do it. Do it how you like, it's your tractor. but. Um, this is just what I'd like to do. So I'm going to grease the gasket, get it all sitting in place here. And um, yeah, I'll come back when I've done that and we'll just lift the housing on and start putting a couple of nuts in. Now, the nuts, I was saying earlier about paint. See the paint on those nuts is starting to flake off and all that. So if you don't clean them up and take all that off, there's a little burr on that one. And um, if you don't take all that off properly, um, yeah, it, it will look rubbish at the end. On nuts, there's usually a, a side with a little, that's a flat side, and there's usually one with a little bit of a, um, little bit of a mark. The mark helps it lock in and hold in place sometimes. So anyway, I'll get this gasket on. I might even clean the nuts and I'll come back. Okay, we've cleaned up a few nuts and things and I've got this um, final drive housing resting on my knee. So we'll just bring it on in, find the holes. So I need to pull this brake rod out of my way. Put a nut just up here to hold it. Now I was saying about the little marks on the nuts before. Well see this one here, it's got gold paint on it. And it's got the mark at the back. But many of them that I just cleaned up were on the other way, so <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's a lot of things that had um, split washers went that way. Okay, we'll pop the just a dab of oil on those top two. Now 
one at the front here. It's got plenty of grease on it anyway. Always blowing a big wind outside, I'm sure you can hear it on the video. I don't like doing these things up with nut guns to start with, because you've got to have the feel, you've got to know that something's not lining up. Or nut gun you can never feel that. Now see by using grease, that little bit of grease there, that can't hurt the paint, it can't get stuck there, it can't do anything that we don't like. Yeah I was looking for the air nozzle before, couldn't find it anywhere. Here it is sitting under the seat where I left it yesterday. That's hard to get good help. Right, and you see now, there's no, no flakes or anything can come off. I'll sand just around there a little bit where there's an edge. I've used an edge on the housing to be a transition for the paint. So. We'll keep bolting it up. I'll go and get the next diff housing ready and I'll come back when we're ready to sit the diff in and put the other axle housing on. It'll probably be a while. Yeah, have a snooze if you like. Okay, there you go. You can see inside the crown wheel. Oh, in, inside the housing, I mean. Now, look, something I'd like to point out from here and I'll get my my gold stabiliser bar pointer and if you can see the nut in there that's the nut that holds the bottom pin on on the um, linkage arm so my point of showing you that is that if you have two broken pins one broken pin whatever um, loose pins if you undo the left hand final drive only on your tractor that will give you access to both sides so there's no need to pull both hips off separately um, you can pull the left hand hip off drop the crown wheel carrier out and you can get access to both so no need to pull both final drives off if you have a damaged pin or if you have just a right hand um, pin that's crook and you just want to pull the right hand final drive off to replace the pin or tighten it up or do something that's fine but even if it was just the right hand one I would still pull the left hand one off and the reason I tell you that is by pulling the left hand one off you get to drop the crown wheel out have a quick look it's no big job and with this one side off if you think oh geez I wonder if the next one's going to break or come loose or something like that it gives you the opportunity to replace them both by just pulling the left hand side off. So, yeah, I'm not sure if everyone knew that. Um, you do now. <laughs> I'll go and get this ground wheel and do a bit of humping and heaving and I'll, I'll get that sitting up in there. It won't go anywhere once it sits up in there. Um, I'll drop a bit of oil on both bearings first and it'll sit in the housing. And I actually want to put it in the housing before I put the gasket on because in the past, you let it sit down a bit and drag it across the next thing you have a damaged gasket so I like to put the crown wheel carrier crown wheel um, assembly in before putting the gasket on so I'll go and get organized right yeah <laughs> I tell you it's a bit hard um, getting the crown wheel seeing the crown wheel up on my knees 
um, so I can turn the camera back on and <laughs> it's a bit of a juggling act but anyway we just need to get the crown wheel in rest it on the bottom I'm just touching on that tin shield in there the oil slinger now it's easier to hurt your fingers doing this Okay, there we go. And so you can't even feel in to see if you've got backlash. If you put this on side on first and went around the other, you still, oh, look, you, you probably could get a dial gauge in, but um, it's a bit of an effort. So anyway, that's the cram wheel sitting in. Um, like I said before, there's no adjustment. You just put the gasket on and bring the trumpet housing up into it and that's it, that's all you can do. Um, I like to lift this up and just push it across and I, I can feel that's into the bearing over on the other side there. So that won't fall out, well it shouldn't fall out. Now I've said that it'll probably land on my foot. But, um, but yeah, that's it. Um, I'll get the other trumpet housing on, cleaned up. Same story as the other one, I'll, I'll actually replace the little Welsh plug and the brake bush and the new pin and um, outer ax or inner axle seal and all that and I'll get the gasket on here and ready to go and I'll come back probably when that's done I think probably no need for you to see it twice now another point of interest um, I mentioned earlier is the brake pivot bush where this brake shaft comes out across um, we we're replacing the bushes in that because we had one buggered one and look this is the width of the old bush that's the width of the new one so what happens though is the shaft gets a little worn patch in it this width um, about as wide as that there and it's not quite double but um, anyway this sets the shaft up in a new position but it only it doesn't wear on the full surface for a while until it gets there but anyway by putting a bit of grease in it'll It'll last a long time, but um, yeah, that's the old, the old genuine one, I believe, versus the new Sparex one. I can't, <laughs> I can't give you the part number of that. I, um, um, when I got it at work, it come with other goods, and they popped it in a little Bearco bag for me. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Another little interesting point is. Um, on the right hand side we had the Welsh plug, this Welsh plug that's gone out and on these tractors they have a, a support that just backs the crown wheel up really and um, this fella here and he sits in like that and I thought oh do I don't, I put a Welsh plug in and all that but anyway I thought yeah look I'll do it and look you can just see it's on its way out you can see the angle that's on there so, that's it, Welsh plug out, Ooh. new bush same as the other side. So yeah, sometimes it's just good to have a look and, um, and go that extra mile even when sometimes you think, oh well you know, it's probably alright, but in this case it wasn't. <laughs> I'd be going crook if I got it going and started leaking oil out there again, wouldn't I? <laughs>